Shalom everyone and welcome to Reboot the Root. We're continuing on in this exciting series, Above the Law. And uh, so I want to ask you a question. Has the New Covenant replaced the Old Covenant? Is it a New Covenant or is it a Renewed Covenant? So in our mainstream Christian theology, what, what has the New Covenant done to the Old Covenant? So join me if you will in this episode of Above the Law. Shalom. Shalom everyone and welcome to this episode of Reboot the Root. I'm so glad that you came back because you have a heart to know God's word, to know God's truth, and that you're a person that desires to find out God's truth in your life by using his Bible. And so that is the heart of Reboot the Root. We are resetting um, our belief system, finding out where did we go wrong in our theology, where did we, where did we miss the turn off. We turned off somewhere off the straight and narrow path and we found a different way that kind of led us away. But I'm glad that you came back to watch this video because that says that you want to find out how to get a course direction. You want to reset your thinking. You want to have a renewing of your mind. You want to have a course correction on your journey with God through the Bible. So that's what Reboot is all about. We're resetting our, our thinking, what we believe, what our doctrinal beliefs are, what our statement of faith is. What, what is it that identifies us in our theology from having an identity uh, and a relationship with the Bible? Okay, so we're throwing away all of man's doctrines and we are returning back to the Bible as expressed in the ancient paths. So welcome back. This is episode eight of the series entitled Above the Law. We are looking at this idea, does the law apply to Christians? So last episode, we got heavy into what is Christian doctrine and especially the Ten Commandments. And so we're going to continue on with the Christian doctrine and specifically uh, does the law apply to Christians? So we're going to migrate from Christian doctrine and we're going to start going on to this idea of does the law apply to Christians? So let's continue on with that. Uh, so looking at Christian doctrine, um, we see that there has been this error that, that is expressed in exploring a false liberty and a false freedom that is apart from God's law. So unfortunately, I, have, I get this idea that when people in church talk about liberty and freedom, they're not talking about the liberty and freedom of the Bible. They're talking about a liberty and freedom from God's law. Uh, I'm afraid that is what's happening. But we have to know that we don't have liberty and freedom from God's instructions because that would mean that we are desiring to be chaotic, uh, being a people of anarchy, that we want to be lawless. And so the Bible calls us to be lawful, but not lawless. So there is no liberty and freedom from God's law, but God does give us liberty and freedom from being lawless. He gives us f freedom and liberty uh, to have freedom in him to be free from the clutches of this world, from the lies of this world, and from the clutches and slavery of sin. That's what we have freedom and liberty in. We're free from sin and we have liberty in Messiah to be the people that he wants us to be. So under current Christian doctrine, um, there's this teaching in most of church theology is that 
there's this doctrine of not being under God's law or under the Mosaic law. And so there's a lot of efforts that are put into their own teachings to say why they believe this. We are called to be a people of law, a people of instructions, a people of God's standard. We are not free to do what we want, and we're not free to be in anarchy. We're not free to be in chaos. That is not, that is not who God is. So under, um, under this false idea of liberty and freedom from God's law that is being taught, we could conclude that when people say, oh, we don't have to keep the Sabbath day because we are free from God's law. But if we take that thinking just a little bit further and say, okay, the Ten Commandments are contain, contain the, the Sabbath day, do they not? Yes, they do. So if we're going to take out the Sabbath day, why don't we take out the one about worshiping other gods? Why don't we take out stealing? Why don't we take out dishonoring our parents? Why don't we take out murder? Why don't we take out committing acts of lawlessness? Uh, why don't we commit acts of adultery? Why don't we do all these other things if we're going to take out the Sabbath day? So we can't cut and paste what we, what we say is God's law for us. So, um, um, so there's this idea out there also that says, well, we don't have to keep the Sabbath day because that's, that's Jewish law. Well, if that's Jewish law, then the Ten Commandments would also be Jewish law, would they not? So all the other nine commandments would not apply to Christians as well if you're going to say that about the Sabbath day. So why do we follow um, the law? Why do we follow God's instructions? Well, in short, we need to have a standard. We need to have laws and instructions. Otherwise, we are lawless and we're giving unto our own ways. The Bible does say that um, there is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end, it leads to destruction. So if we do not want to be destroyed and have destruction, um, then we would have God's way and not our way. So why do we follow the law? Commandments are the body of the law. It's what makes up the law. And so if we look at the Hebrew word of commandment, we see the word mitzvah. Mitzvah is singular. And if we say commandments as in a plural form, we would use the word mitzvot. I personally follow a belief that the law of instructions have not been destroyed, but give us instructions in how to walk before our God and his word should be followed by the spirit and not by the letter of the law. I advocate for a lifestyle centered about the commandments that has otherwise been ignored or taught that isn't applicable any longer. So can we live without instructions? What would our American society look like if we don't have any law? Currently in our United States right now, we see a breakdown of the justice system. We see a breakdown of the Constitution. We see a breakdown of law where it says this group of people over here, they, they have to keep the law with a consequence while this group over here, they are above the law and they can do whatever they want and they're showing the rest of us that the law doesn't have a standard. So is that what we want for our Christian doctrine to say is that we have this type of behavior of being lawless where law, the law or instructions doesn't have a standard? So can we live without instructions? Can we exist in our anarchy and disorder? No, we will have a breakdown in our justice system in our American society just as much as we would have in our church system if we didn't have a standard. Um, so looking at Mark 13, 31, we have Yeshua teaching us about how he sees the existence of the law here in the New Covenant. He says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. So God's law, God's word is forever. A question that is often asked and debated is whether or not Christians should keep 
the Old Testament law, especially when living in a New Covenant type of doctrine. Are Christians under the law of Moses, and are Christians obligated or required to follow Old Testament laws? The question goes on to say, does the law have any place in a Christian's life? Didn't Jesus do away with the law? And does the law apply to Christians? So I will answer this all in a yes. Okay. Are Christians under the law of Moses? Yes. Why? Because that we see in the Bible, especially in the New Testament, that we are called to be, to be lawful. If we have to say that sin is something that breaks us down to where we need the Messiah, sin must still exist because otherwise we would say that no one has sinned and no one has need of a Savior. So if the law has been done away with, then there would be no sin. We, we, we know that sin is defined as breaking God's law. And so there must be this standard for us to be under. The law is something that points us to Yeshua in need of a Savior. Are, are, are Christians obligated and required to follow Old Testament laws? Yes, we see all the time there are lots of laws that we keep that we don't even think about that are in the Old Testament, specifically the Torah. Um, we see a lot of things that have to do with, um, we see this, this teach against homosexuality and perversion. Would we say those laws we don't have to do anymore? Have those laws gone away? No, but someone may say, well, we have the, God, the grace of God that frees us from keeping those laws. Really? Is that really how we think? Is that God would provide a way for us to just disobey his law? Did he come to die so that we don't have to keep his laws anymore? No, he came to die, set us free from breaking the law, the consequences of breaking God's law. That's what we're freed from. Um, our does the law have any place in a Christian's life? Yes, it does. Without God's law, what, what would we say is our behavior of being a Christian? We go around and say, yeah, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. But what does that mean? Do we have any kind of definition of what it means to be a Christian? Well, for me to be a Christian is to be like Christ. And Christ kept and taught the law. So, so to be a Christian, we would be all over that to say, yes, we need to be following God's teachings. The law of God should be in our lives. Didn't Jesus do away with the law? No, we see that in the book of Matthew that says that he didn't come to fulfill the law, but he, um, that the, no, the law wasn't destroyed, but he came to fulfill the law. And so we understand that to mean that fulfill is direct opposite to destroy. So if Yeshua said he didn't come to destroy the law, that means the law must still be in place. So we have to understand what does he mean by fulfilling the law? Well, he came here to teach us what it was to be, uh, to be lawful, how to be law keepers, how to walk in his law in a new covenant um, type of relationship with him. So so we see that in the book of Matthew. And so, no, Jesus didn't do away with the law. He didn't get on the cross to bring an end to the law. But he, he came to do away with the consequences of breaking God's law. Doesn't the law apply to Christians? Yes, all these answers, these questions are yes. The law applies to the, to the Christians. Otherwise, you'd have to say, that we are called to just do whatever we want. That we, we, there is no standard for us to follow. There is no uh, direction for us to follow after. So yes, the law does apply to Christians. There exists an inadequacy on the behalf of Bible students and theologians to 
correctly comprehend scripture due to the ignorance of scripture itself. Remember this concept. Scripture inter inter interprets scripture. And we see that all over throughout the Bible. That we see that there is this um, proving of God's word. We see the application of the Old Testament in the New Testament. Scripture needs to be interpreted in context and what is the context of the New Testament? The context of the New Testament is in reference to the Old Testament. So you don't have a proper understanding of the New Testament until you have a good understanding of the Old Testament, specifically the Torah. First read the Torah and then you'll understand the New Testament a lot better. So let's go back here. Scripture needs to be interpreted in context, and I already said that, is in context of all of the scripture working together. Old Testament working with the New Testament and by the culture it was written. So we make this mistake as Christians. We try to understand um, the Bible as a whole from an English speaking perspective. Well, I hate to break the news to you. The Bible was not written in English nor with an English type of thinking with an English type of culture. The Bible was written in a Hebraic language, a Hebraic culture, with Hebraic, Hebraic perspective. So that's the way we have to understand the Bible. And so that's where we get into trouble is we try to teach the Bible from an English Western standpoint and we need to understand it and teach it from a Middle Eastern, specifically Hebraic perspective. So trying to understand a 100% Hebraic text with a mostly English translation will only lead to error. Comprehending Hebraic culture with a, an American Hellenized thinking of scripture will provide for a void of uh, misunderstanding scripture from a biblical understanding. So we're going to have this con uh, conflict of comprehension of truth because we're trying to apply American English Westernized thinking um, to a Hebraic uh, document. And so um, we have to readjust, reboot, if you will, our understanding of how we study the Bible. Study the Bible from a Hebraic culture and a Hebraic language, and you will redirect your paths. Many Christians believe that the Mosaic Law were Jewish laws given only for Jews and don't apply to Christians. Well, you're going to have a problem with that when you try to explain laws that you already do keep and you have to say, well, no, those are, he those are Jewish laws. So I don't have to keep those anymore. So you could apply that type of thinking to all of the Bible if you wanted to because the Bible was written, written um, for Jewish believers um, that had been um, that had been converted to accept Yeshua as the Messiah. So um, we're going to have a problem if we start thinking that the laws of God were for Jews only because we're going to find ourselves having a problem with that doctrinal statement because we will find that you cannot separate the laws you don't want to keep as Jewish laws and the laws you do want to keep, those are applied to Christians. You cannot separate God's law like that. So likewise, Christians don't seem to think of themselves as part of Israel. Um, and so this type of thinking, when you don't think of yourselves as Israel, that kind of gives you a, a license to say, I don't have to keep the laws that I don't agree with. or they challenge my comfort level. But you, you cannot think like that because God doesn't have Israel and the church. The Israel and church are together. They are the assembly of Yahweh where we all come under one God, we come under one Bible, and we come under one law. And so that's what we're here to really talk about at Reboot the Root is to find out what is, we're here to challenge this idea that we're above God's law somehow to be able to pick and choose which laws we will choose to keep and which laws we, we will not. That's not the Christian walk. The Christian walk is that we obey God. So when we disobey God, we have sin. 
uh, Bible.org tells us that the law makes us all accountable to God. And that is a very true statement. When we, when we are under God's law, we are accountable to God himself. To excuse ourselves from God's law is to excuse ourselves from God himself. So let's take a look at a few errors that um, in Christian thought that are proposed in a challenge format to obeying God's law. So seven errors. I'm, I'm sure there's more, but I picked seven. Error number one, the Mosaic law was only for Jews and that the Mosaic law is Jewish only. And I just went over that. So. That is a misconception because there's only one set of laws for everyone who follows after God. And so there's only one God, right? There's only one real God. Uh, so, and there's only one law for the people of God. So there's not a law for Gentiles and a law for Jewish people. Um, the law applies the same all across. Otherwise, we don't have an argument to say, well, people are sinners. Well, are people sinners under what law? Well, people are sinners under the Torah. And we have to go through and see all the Torah laws to see what laws are broken that make someone a sinner. So when we say people are sinners, they are sinners um, against God's Torah. Otherwise, you have to say, well, what laws did they sin if, if the laws were applicable to everyone and not just Jewish people? Uh, error number two, Christians are no longer responsible to keep God's law. Um, so that is an error in doctrinal statements that says that we are not under... Um, God's law, but we're under grace. So when you're under something, you're under its authority, you're under its consequence. So if you are under the law, you will be subjected to the law of sin and death. But when you're under grace, grace takes away that consequence of death. But that doesn't take away God's law. So Christians are called to be law keepers. They're called to be lawful. We're not called to be um, people of iniquity, which would mean that we're lawless. Error number three, that the law is no longer binding on Christians, would suggest that we, we are teaching people a false doctrine of freedom from God's law or God's standard. The Word of God is there to provoke us to walking um, in the fruits of righteousness, which be, would be law-keeping. The fruit, the fruit of, of salvation is that we become law-keepers. So when we, when we see someone come to Christ and salvation, our, our heart is that they will be disciples. So we want to plug them into a place that they will be discipled. But that discipleship should look like this, teaching people to go to a new standard to not be sinners. And what is sinners? People who have broken God's law. So what sense does it make to lead someone to salvation away from sin, but then direct them right back to that same uh, law keeping? So we have to remember that law keeping is more than we don't murder people and we don't steal and we don't you know, do those type of things. Law keeping em encompasses all of God's standards and not just a few of the obvious baddies, as some people would call. Um, you know, people use that thing. Well, I'm not a bad person. I never killed anybody. I never stole from anybody. Well, yeah, while those things are sin, they are not the only sins. So we have to keep this in mind when we're encouraging people to not be sinners, is that we have to teach them to go in the opposite direction. Uh, error number four is that Christians live under grace apart from the law. Well, that is an error statement. Um, that is a big, big error is that uh, in Christianity, it is taught that, that um, 
once you are born again that you're under grace and that really gets rid of God's law. Well, part of that statement is true. The other part of it is not. Uh, the part that is true is that you are under God's grace. And while God's grace does uh, wash away your sins, um, knowing that the blood of Christ uh, washes you away your sin and you only have the blood of Christ because of grace by faith. It is that believing that Yeshua the Messiah died on your behalf to give you grace, but that does not excuse you from breaking the law. God expects us after we come to him to be lawful people, to go in the opposite direction of sin. So grace does not get rid of law keeping. In fact, grace works with law keeping. Uh, error number six, Jesus did away with the law with his cru crucifixion is the natural idea that is taught that that Jesus died for our sins, that um, that he nailed the law to the cross is how that um, is that how that idea goes is um, no, he didn't nail the law to his cross. He nailed our offenses. He nailed our our um, record. There's a record of all of our offenses that we have kept. They are against us. And and so that is what was nailed to the cross. It's, 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 if you were to take a, a list of all of your sins, and it was a long list, and we just saw sin after sin, I mean, the, the, the list would be tremendously long, I'm sure. Miles and miles and miles long. I know mine would be. And we were to look at all those sins and we had them on a paper and we nailed them to the cross of Yeshua. That's what's being talked about there. We're not talking about nailing God's law where it's destroyed. That just does not make any sense. Uh, error number seven, G Jesus died to do away with his law. No, Jesus Yeshua died to died for sinners and not his law. We see this evident in biblical doctrine, not man-made doctrine, about how Yeshua, he, he came to teach us how to walk in his law, how to, how to walk out his law, how to be obedient to his law, and more importantly, how does the law um, respond to the new covenant that we read about in Jeremiah 31. And so these are all errors that, that are developed in Christian doctrine about how the law applies to Christians. So if the law has been eliminated, then grace would have no power because sin no longer exists with no law to transgress. Grace, grace should never become an element for the, for the believer to dismiss and trample the law with the grace card. Grace, while grace does excuse our ignorance and our inability, grace actually becomes God's ability for us while we are learning to obey the law. So we are expected that once we know the law, we are supposed to walk in it, to turn away from being lawless and to be lawful. Consider the new covenant that is prophesied in Jeremiah 31 as it still emphasizes the need for the law. And so if we were to look at Jeremiah 31, we would see how it describes that the law will be written upon our hearts. So that signifies that we will still have a need for the law here as New Testament believers in Messiah. Yeshua. So um, next time we will talk about the new covenant that I just talked about in Jeremiah 31. So um, this is a good place to say that we are at the end of episode 8 of this episode or, or this series rather episode 8 of this series of Above the Law. I want to invite you to please subscribe to this channel and to like this video. And so come back next time for episode nine, and we're going to talk about the new covenant. That'll be interesting to talk about and how it relates to law keeping. And so this is Reboot the Root uh, saying Shalom for now and invite you next time as we continue to Reboot the Root. 
Shalom.